Yo, we got to talk about the 2K League. Listen, this right here, this video, first of all, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, but this is my opinion. This is my unlicensed, but very incredibly professional opinion. If you guys missed it, the tip-off tournament dropped off, bro, when I have some things to say, $100,000 on the line. First of all, it was fun to watch, especially in the fourth quarter, where it exponentially increased in fun, when the games were close, at least. If you're the Grizzlies, none of your games were close, except one. I'll take a again with Trigger. That winner stays on, and He's pulls taking three. Can't get it to go. Another opportunity. Yes! And no, it will not count. It will not count. The buzzer had gone off. Because you drafted a pretty horrible team. It seems like. It seems like that. It seems like you might figure something out if you're the Grizzlies. But right now, the Grizzlies are getting battered in the league, and it's hilarious to watch. <laughs> Okay, uh, the 2K League has some incredibly serious problems. Over the course of the stream, they were pulling anywhere from like 3,000 to 8,000 viewers, depending on the time, who was playing. When Dime's first overall pick was on, especially when he went up against Fab, the second overall pick, they were pulling like nine, at one point 10,000, which was impressive. But the draft pulled 20K, so in my mind, just based off anchoring, I was hoping it was a little bit more, but let's just move on from that. The number one thing people were saying in the chat was, are these the top 102? So let me just explain to you what's going on. If you play Pro-Am on NBA 2K, you're playing an entirely different game from these guys. If you play the Combine, that's basically what these guys are playing with, Combine sliders. Which means even if they release the ball perfectly, there's a chance, especially if they're not shooting catch and shoot from the corner with corner specialists, that they might miss an all-white release, even though they released it perfectly. They cannot customize their dribble moves. They can't even customize their dunks and layups, which is a serious issue because some of the big men don't have proper standing dunks and it makes them unusable. There was one play I saw where a player was driving baseline and he wanted to go for a reverse layup like any competitive player would do but his player didn't have one equipped so he went up for a regular layup on the baseline and got stuffed and I heard the commentator say oh that was a bad decision in my mind I'm thinking no he did the correct thing he just didn't have the animation equipped because he wasn't allowed to customize that. So a lot of the customization and things you would think require skill were reduced in the name of balance and also in the name of realism. See, this is problem number one in my opinion. ESPN put this out. What are we doing here? They're comparing the Cavaliers first overall pick Hood to LeBron James and they're saying, how about NBA 2K LeBron James versus real life LeBron James? A fun, quirky comparison that does no harm. Except it does. I think 2K should be trying to disassociate themselves from realism. It's not fun to watch 2K players miss 60% of their shots, but in reality, even the best three-point shooters will shoot like 42%. I think that's part of the reason why the 2K League is reducing shooting to try and make it seem more realistic. What this usually results in is every single time players are just throwing it down into the paint, one pump fake, hoping the player jumps, doing a drop step or pushing them out, and it just, the gameplay is too simplistic. And I get it, part of the reason why they're doing this also is they don't want five out offense to ruin the league. If you guys play Pro-Am competitively on NBA 2K18, you know, you will run across all kinds of teams just running exclusively five out where everybody stands at the three point line and watches the point guard dribble the entire game. It's boring and occasionally we saw teams run it, but it wasn't anything like the, how we see people run it regularly in Pro-Am on 2K. How about FIFA, for example? If you watch the FIFA Pro League, by the way, I was watching one of their streams. They had 80,000 people in there. I was like, God damn. I'm pretty sure they were using some sort of incentives. They're giving away FIFA Ultimate Team cards to get people in there, which is clever. And I'm sure the 2K League will at some point try and do. But more than that, as I was watching the games, teams were scoring like every 10 minutes on the court, right? On the court, on the field. Agent, listen, I don't watch a lot of football, soccer, whatever you want to call it. But I do know is teams in real life aren't scoring three, four goals minimum a game. But that's what you would see a lot of in the league. Still, we didn't see a lot of comparison with, oh wow, why does everybody be scoring so much in FIFA? People are just used to it. On 2K, for whatever reason, we have this obsessive idea that it has to be exactly like real life. And anytime it strays from that, what are we gonna do, guys? It's not realistic. In the pursuit of realism and balance, they're reducing the skills gap, I think. Bro, if I ever shot an all-white release for the win and I missed, I would lose my mind. I heard from a 2K League player that apparently the sliders they're playing on are more difficult than Hall of Fame. 
This presents the next problem because the viewers don't know what I'm talking about. If you're a casual viewer and you're like, the 2K League, let's just pop in and see what this is about, and you see them missing shots, you're thinking to yourself, bro, I make those in 2K all the time. I'm not watching guys I'm better than. I got myself a bronze corner three as a shot creator slash slasher 88. I can make 70% of my corner threes. These guys can't make threes for shit. And then you'll see people leave the oh so popular comment, are these the best 102? There's plenty of ways other esports help solve this issue. For example, you'll see a lot on Call of Duty, there's open bracket teams. So me, you, and a couple of my other buddies can get together, put out a team, and fight our way to pro events. And usually at those pro events, the open bracket teams get pummeled, destroyed. Occasionally, they'll make it out of pool play and they'll be the Cinderella performance, but most of the time, it's super clear to the people watching, open bracket teams and the people that aren't playing professionally, there's tears to this. And those professional players are at the top for a reason. 2K, I think, is at the very beginning of helping establish that. And I think they need to do more. Of course, a primary complaint a lot of people were having were, yo, why aren't we watching this in 2K camp? Who watches on broadcast? The only logical solution to that, I think, is that the broadcast camera is the, you'll get the best view for advertisements because it's looking directly at the sideline uh, scorers table where they show them. That's the only possible reason to be played on broadcast. I can't think of another way. And it kind of sucks, but I understand the league has to be profitable, ads are important, I get it. But here's something that the NHL and the MLB are realizing, and I hope the 2K League does too. Offense is exciting. So I'm a sport management student. We talked about a lot of this stuff over the course of university a lot. Leagues are trying to find ways to speed up the pace, to make things more exciting, to introduce new offense. If you guys remember, in the late 90s, early 2000s, the NBA was contemplating removing hand checking, and they eventually did. The main reason they did is they realized before any other league that offense is exciting to watch. Nobody wants to see an entirely defensive affair. Now, occasionally, it could be fun when Dikembe Mutombo was snatch blocking individuals, but watching Curry hit it from limitless range or watching LeBron destroy my Raptors at the high post fade from 20 feet away, it's the stuff you talk about, you write articles about, you tweet about, you text your friends about. Almost in an entirely opposite perspective, instead of worrying about making the league exciting and fun, the 2K League is worried about making it realistic and almost bland. I get that it can be ridiculous. Competitive players, especially in these games, there'll be games where a point guard might go 19 for 21, right? And it's an insane percentage when you think about it. And I'm not saying it needs to be that crazy, but a player that releases the ball perfectly or does a dribble move perfectly shouldn't be punished in any way whatsoever, is what I believe. Increase the shooting a little bit and it'll space the floor, all that paintball, there'll be a new meta, a lot of, and this happens, right? Esports, a lot of the time they change things, make adjustments, they ban this thing or allow this thing because they're trying to make the meta and the game more fun to watch for the viewers. If you just date back really quickly and go to NBA 2K17, event Road to the All-Star Game. Now, the event wasn't as polished. There was a lot of hiccups and bugs in 2K17 that I don't see a hint of in 2K18. It's literally, the production is fantastic on the league. The gameplay was so much more fun to watch. Keep in mind, I didn't like that you could just momentum cross, momentum cross, momentum cross, brick wall screen, and then you fly on the floor, and then now your whole team is scrambling to rotate properly. But still, the offense in 17, just compared to 18, was so much faster. Things were moving. When a player released the ball perfectly, it was hitting green and it hit off the bank and it made the game exciting and fun to watch, fast paced. And it, it took me going back to watch and compare differences. It's slow and almost, you can use the word strategic. I kind of miss that fast paced offense. And last but not least is the casters. Uh, the casters don't really know 2K. I, I, I literally do not think I've heard one mention of like a limitless range badge or pick and roll maestro coming off the screen. Bro, Google keeps interrupting me and I'm not even calling her name. I honestly thought that having casters in the 2K league that didn't, they know 2K, but they don't really know 2K. I thought that might kill it for me. Weirdly enough, the guys have good chemistry. They're fun to listen to. 
And it doesn't seem like they're afraid to pick jabs at players when they're playing bad. You know, sometimes they'll like beat around the bush when you're watching an, an NBA game. Like just say he's performing horribly. Like part of the reason why I love to watch TNC or ESPN, like Jeff Van Gunny will get on there and he'll just criticize the referee or he'll criticize a coach for making a wrong decision or he'll even criticize the league itself that's paying him for making a, a like one and done. That's stupid. And like whatever, the conversation goes from there. Like we saw a serious criticism come in for the the Grizzlies team because I think they're hands down the worst team in the league and they deserve the criticism like you shouldn't be holding people's hands and it makes it fun to watch they do a good job of getting the chat engaged so there's that shout out to my guy Dirk although he's not casting the games he's casting all the stuff in between the games and so that's kind of just where I'm at I feel like the league is just started off and I'm hoping it could do better of course nobody would want it to do bad you're a part of the community you want to see it succeed honestly I'm not like a professional I don't sit like I just I'm a viewer I'm a consumer of esports. So I, I really don't know what they have to do. This is just, as a, as a 2K player, things I think would help make a positive impact difference. Yo, if you guys watched the tip-off tournament, go in the comment section, let me know how you felt about it or if there's anything you'd like to see improve. Every time 2K comes out with a major project, right, is always serious issues. Don't even let me remind you, literally every single game launch, there's a major issue. Park After Dark, who remembers that? Anytime there's double wrap, Double XP, the games are crashing, latency is out of control, people are lagging out, it's horrible. Oh my, don't even get me started on all of that. The Paul George glitch, do we remember that? Or how about in 2K18, where East Coast teams couldn't play with West Coast teams for the first few months of the game's launch? So weirdly enough, uh, for the first time, I think, in years, 2K took on a big project and it looks incredibly polished. I'm gonna leave it on that. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. I don't know how much 2K, well, it depends on how much, how interested you guys are. If you guys don't care about the league, then I, there's no real point in me continuing to make these kinds of videos. So let me know where you guys are sitting at. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Shout out to my raptors. I don't care if they're down in the series. Always gotta support. Stop with the memes and the trolling. I'm out. Peace.